We've been introduced to the materials room and shaders inside of Poser. Using Andy, we turned them to wood. We looked at some of the functions of how shaders work with the bricks. Now we're going to look at how to interact with the materials room with a character. And the reason we're going in step-by-step -step process is that now we're getting into a fairly complex adaptation of materials for geometry. I've got the basic casual Ryan sitting right here. And he happens to have on a pair of shorts, which are independent from the character's body itself. With the running shorts selected right now, if we pop into the material room, we'll see that, well, as we would expect up at the top here, we have running shorts enabled too. But like posing characters inside of this program, you have the ability to select different items inside the materials room as well. So if I want to switch from Ryan's running shorts to Ryan, I simply have to select him in the pull-down menu right there. Once that happens, it looks like there's only one shader for the character. But this is where we come back into the idea of working with the characters, just like we have when we deal with the posing. We've got the main object selector shown here, and then we happen to have the material selector, or in this case, body parts. If we click on the disclosure triangle right there, this is where we begin selecting all the various different parts of the character and adjusting them if we want to. For example, with the body here, if we wanted to create kind of a sweat look, he'd been rained on or working out or something like that, we are going to have to change how the specular color, currently it's black, there's no specular color at all, would need to go to white and it would need to be fairly focused and bright so you get those bright highlights on the skin. If we want to, as you'll notice, there's no head here. These are kind of creepy looking when you first get involved with texture maps, but it is the geometry unfolded and the texture applied to it. So we have some fingers and toes, some hands, some legs, but that's it. The reason the head is not here is typically cameras move in more closely for the head. They require a higher level of detail because of that, and so they become a different selectable item. When we come to head here, we see now that we've got the face, which has been unwrapped. We see the tongue, but there's no eyes yet. We also have the ears, which, by the way, are one of the hardest things to model effectively or convincingly in the 3D world. So with this entire map right here, we have one map dedicated to the face that contains as much resolution as the map dedicated to the whole body. So that is also one of the reasons that these are split up, so that you can wind up with a fairly high-definition texture map for the various areas you're working into. Again, this is a fairly simple texture. It's been applied as a texture map. There's nothing special going on over here in the specular colors, ambient values, these type of things. There are texture maps that have a greater sense of subsurface scattering, and we'll get to that in some movies coming up real shortly. Well, let's pop over and look at something here like eye sockets. Well, notice that nothing changes right here. And it's because the program is using the exact same texture map for a different texture area. This does give you the ability to use one texture map, but change how it presents. So if we wanted to change the color of the eye socket for some way, or some reason, we could do that. But if we come on down to, let's say, the iris right, we'll see now that we have a separate texture map specifically for the eyes that already have the highlights put in there. Again, we could go ahead and say, well, if we want them to have a little degree of reflection to them to be realistic or to reflect light or a light in our scene, this is how we would come in and make these changes. We could do that simply by coming over to the reflected color channels here and reflected values. Let's go ahead and come back quickly to our pose map right here. We'll go to the face cam and zoom in real closely. I am going to do an area render right here of an eye as the program thinks about it for a second. And it begins rendering up. And we see not a whole lot of change right there. Come back to the preview window. And I'm going to move this in just a little bit so we can get a little bit closer. And give this an area render again. So now we have our render and we see some reflections. These reflections are actually part of the texture map itself. And one of the reasons they're made part of the texture map is that it saves rendering time. The program is not actually thinking about what's in the space around the character. It's simply applying the textures because we're accustomed to seeing reflections in people's eyes. We get satisfied because we see reflections, but they're not true reflections. 
So when we have colored environments or something where there's possibly a room with sunset types of light in it, this is where we'll want to come in and change so we pick up the actual qualities of the room around it. If we also come in and do a quick little render right for the eyebrows, we'll see what looks to be very fuzzy, very imprecise, and we'll see when it renders up that we have a much higher level of precision to that. These are handled with transparency maps, and we'll go ahead and look and break down some of these textures so we can see what's going on in our next movie.